Okay, everyone, welcome to the drop shipping product research lesson. And in this lesson, what I really want to focus on is understanding what makes a winning product, right? Drop shipping is all about finding winning products. And when we say winning, we mean products that have a demand that you can sell and that you can scale with your advertising to make lots of money, right? That's what this whole game is about. And so there are definitely uh, key things that you should be thinking about and you should be looking at. You shouldn't just be doing this randomly, okay? And so what I want to give you in here is everything uh, that I've learned from my own experience and in networking with other people. And we're actually going to have, there's going to be a couple, uh, a couple lessons here, right? So there'll be the product research lesson explained here in the, the strategic concepts and, and points of what you should be looking for to understand what makes a winning product and how to find them. And then we're also going to look at uh, a live demonstration of actually doing product research and looking for winning products using the sources and methods that I talk about. And then I'll also introduce uh, some drop shipping product research tools that you can use as well um, because there's softwares out there that you can choose to use if you want to you certainly don't have to uh for example in the ecom empires coaching uh with with justin wall and the beyond six figures program we are showing people how to find winning products like big time winning products that are able to scale into five figure multiple five figures a day right and it has nothing to do with using product research apps or tools or anything. So I want to be clear that you don't necessarily need a tool or a secret trick. You need a process. You need a method. You need to understand what you're looking for and you need to understand what makes a, a winning, uh, a winning product criteria, basically. First things first is to understand that everything in e-commerce is about matching great products to a target audience. Okay. Uh, there's, you know, there's this idea out there. I've, I've seen this before in the group where people think that any product can be a winning product if you have the right marketing angle or if you find the right audience. And, and that's not true, right? Like at, at the very core of what we're doing, we want to find great products that uh, have some type of value in what they do. When you have a winning product, it's so much easier to sell and scale, right? This is what people miss is that most of the time people are trying to scale products that aren't really winning products, right? Like the demand is just not really there. Just because you get a sale or two randomly does not mean that demand is there. When you have a winning product, you'll know it because it's actually easy to sell, right? You don't even need to be a genius at scaling Facebook ads or know all the, the craziest tips and tricks to be able to scale something that the market wants. If you have a good offer, uh, a good a good video ad creative, right? And, and you have a, a well set up funnel. Okay. Everything that we've talked about and, uh, in this entire academy. So that's important to understand, right? And, Cause if you have a losing product, if you have a product that doesn't really have much demand, if you have a product that doesn't really have a purpose or solve anything or, or hit on any of the points that we're going to talk about here, then it doesn't matter if you have all the Facebook scaling strategies in the world. Okay. Also understand that not all uh, products are created equal. You can't force a product to sell more than the market wants. Now, I believe I talked about this before, but it's important to reiterate here because uh, there's tiers of winning products, all right? And they're all valuable to your business, okay? It's not just about always looking for the gold cup winning product. And this is something that I'm telling you based on experience, right? Because everybody I think kind of goes through this. I did as well. And so you're getting valuable insight here from experience to, to understand that you, you just can't, you, you, when you're, when you're, when you're starting and, and you find some products, like there's automatically that desire that you want to scale to the moon, right? As they say. And, and that's fantastic. It's great to be excited. But the truth is not every product is going to be that scalable just based on whatever the market demand is. And that's something that 
you you really can't predict right you're just going to be able to see that within your advertising now that's important and we're going to talk about that when we get into facebook advertising because if you try to push a product too hard or too far you can end up making it unprofitable where if you just realize that there are tiers of winning products some of them are going to be your gold winners that can go into multiple six figures and beyond right even into seven figures okay some of them are going to be like your silver uh, tier winning products that will do you know ten thousand plus in sales maybe they'll do anywhere from ten thousand to a hundred thousand dollars in sales and then you have your bronze winning products which are not selling much right they'll they'll sell and they'll be profitable but you're not breaking ten thousand dollars in in sales okay that's important to understand because if you're running a business you want to utilize all of them right it's not just about always uh, always looking for the, the gold tier because if you can get multiple and because the gold tier is hardest to find, right? Like out of all your winning products, uh, the amount of them that are going to fit into the gold tier, tier category are are definitely going to be on the, the fewer and rare side. So understand that you want to have a mix of all of these. Now, looking at focus points for winning products, okay, what are the things that make people want to buy something okay what are uh what are the value propositions right we talked about value proposition every product should have a value proposition behind it that is a reason it's a trigger it's the the outcome of why somebody wants to buy that product and you need to understand this on a on a subconscious level because while the the person who's looking at the product may not be thinking of it in these terms this is how you market it to them right this happens on a subconscious level if you can understand these things that these are uh these are what sell products okay saves time or money increases efficiency those are those are both very similar right um but any any type of product that's going to save people time save people money it's going to increase the efficiency with which they can do something in their life or in their daily commute or at their job those are always going to be things that that can work well uh pride or ego all right basically if something can make a person feel more confident okay or if something can be uh, if something can relate to a thing that a person has a lot of pride in, then that type of product can always do really well, right? And, and these can fall into multiple categories here. Pride or ego, making somebody feel more confident, that's a very big category, right? Health and beauty falls into that category, okay? Health and beauty is all about making somebody feel more confident in themselves, all right? And that's why uh, health and beauty products do so well when it comes to makeup or cosmetics or weight loss or fitness. They, they make somebody feel more confident, better about themselves when they are, uh, when they're, when they're using these products okay but it can also be on the other side with print on demand right like why do people buy veteran shirts why do people buy second amendment gun rights shirts why do why is nurses such a big niche right because people have pride in what they believe in people have pride in what they do so when you are able to make products specifically for that audience then it's something that uh, can really really speak to them in a way that they want to represent it they want to show the world they want to wear something that talks about what they believe in or who they are okay and and that's a huge thing in print on demand selling apparels and accessories uh, with like unique designs that are targeted towards people happiness and comfort uh the the biggest niches in this i think are family and pets and i mean it's it's important to understand that a product could have multiple value propositions right like uh for example for example if you think of a fitness product okay a fitness product that is a uh What's an example? Okay, there was a Shark Tank product uh, that was a, it was like a stand-up board, okay? And it was basically, it had a, a round uh, half circle or half sphere bottom to it, okay? So basically this board pivoted on top of uh, a half of a ball, okay? And all you did is you like twisted it back and forth. I forget what it was called, but anyway, this this product solved multiple things, right? Uh, it, number one, it would save time for people, okay, on the workout side because it actually allowed them to just pull out this, uh, this, you know, this little board and do, uh, workout from anywhere in their home. Uh, number two, 
too, it, it was about uh, making somebody feel better, their pride, right? Because they were getting in shape. Number three, it also helped them reach an outcome of wanting to tone their muscles or tone their abs or tone their stomach or lose a little bit of weight, right? So these are value propositions that can have, uh, they can work together within any one product. I'm just going through the different things that I think are real focus points uh, that you can find in different products that you see out there selling well. And when you understand this and you're doing your product research, you can identify these value propositions in the types of products that you're looking at to determine if they if they really are something that are people are going to be interested in so happiness and comfort uh you know family pets i think are great examples of this because people get happiness out of buying stuff for their loved ones or people get happiness out of taking care of their pets they get comfort out of that uh, this could also be home decor right people get comfort out of decorating their home a certain way or uh, you know feeling good and, and buying products that help them have a more comfortable life okay uh, makes life easier of course this is uh, makes life easier is something that could be multiple categories, right? One that I can think of off the top of my head uh, is like a, a kitchen category, okay? So we're gonna look at a product in a second uh, that I've already shared as an example, or not, I'm sorry, I didn't share it yet. Uh, I will share it again later. I use this product multiple times, but it's a salad bowl maker that basically increased the efficiency and makes life easier for people who like to eat salad, right? And so those those types of like kitchen hack items are, you'll, you'll see those a lot and they are based on makes life easier, increases the efficiency of doing a task. Uh, solves a problem. This is huge, of course, uh, just because it's the last one. These aren't in any specific order. The old problem solution marketing is like marketing 101 that dates back to the, the beginning of time, right? When somebody has a problem and you can solve it for them, uh, that's always going to be something that can sell really, really well. Even if the problem was not a problem to them until you made them aware of the problem, right? Which I'll, we'll talk about in a second here. So problem, passion, pride, I call these the three P's of winning products uh, because I think that when you can hit these areas, then you you have a, a really good marketing angle because a lot of times, as you see here, like I said, marketing is about creating the outcome in the mind of the audience. Okay, even if it's as simple as something as a t-shirt, that person on a subconscious level when they look at this t-shirt has to be able to imagine themselves wearing it and feeling a certain way. That's the outcome. Okay, and so marketing is always about creating that outcome in the mind of the user, um, not the mind of the user, the mind of the, the prospect to become a customer, right? That's what makes people buy. People buy on emotion and justify on logic, okay? So the three P's of winning products, problem, passion, pride, I think are three really identifiable uh, areas that when you understand these, you're able to create marketing angles that speak to the outcome of why somebody should buy something or why they will buy something. Problem, of course, we just talked about is, is what I think, uh, one of the biggest ones and definitely one of the most, uh, surefire ways. Now it has to be a real problem. Okay. In, in the sense, well, let me, let me rephrase that. It has to be a problem with a big enough market demand. Okay. Like, uh, for example, I saw a product before referring to Shark Tank again, because there's always all kinds of product ideas on there, where somebody developed a certain type of pillow for women uh, to be able to lay on their stomach, right? It had to do with a pillow that would fit their body in a way uh, for pregnant women to be able to lay on their stomach and, and like uh, also be comfortable still with, uh, you know, the way that their stomach was and, and the way that their chest was. So this was a unique product, but ultimately the sharks all passed on it because they said that the market is just way too small for this, right? Because now you're, you're cutting the market in half to just women, first of all, which women can be a fantastic market, but then within women, you're cutting it down to a subsection of just women who are pregnant. And then within that women, 
who are pregnant who like to lay on their stomach uh, in in the way that this product was being described. And so, you know, it's not that it can't sell, but it, it was something super, super niche. So ultimately, the best problems that you can solve or what I like to think of as like the realist problems are problems that hit a, a mass market. OK, so, for example, something like uh, the, the product that we're going to look at that helps people achieve a salad in a, a quicker time right that's a that's a product that could appeal to many many people right it's a mass market many people eat salad have a kitchen and have a busy life okay so when you can solve some sort of problem or pain point for your audience audience and then market a product to them as the solution right it's kind of the old uh in copywriting it's it's the old idea of sticking the knife in a little bit and twisting it and then offering the solution you know you you find the pain point you agitate it you make them aware of it and then you present the solution to them in a unique way with a good offer uh that's the problem solution method of products Passion is definitely passion and pride are similar, but I, I think that they have um, I think that they have their own distinct kind of feel to them, right? Passion is something that your audience is really passionate about in their lives, and the example I have here again is family and pets. Okay, uh, relationships and family and pets are three of the biggest niches by far in e-commerce, especially in print on demand. Okay, because people will buy items based on the stuff that they're passionate about. This also has to deal with hobbies, right? If you're passionate about your hobby, then then you can sell products into that because people will spend money where their passion is. Also pride, um, because pride is more of a representation, right? Passion is like an outward feeling of something that we, that we love and we care about. Pride is like an inward feeling of something that we are really proud about of, of ourself within our own life. So this is, uh, like veterans or occupations, like I already talked about. I think they are two really, um, great examples. Veterans are proud of being a veteran. So it's a big niche to be able to sell clothes and items to veterans okay they that helps them represent who they are occupations like being a nurse being a nurse is something nurses have a lot of pride in and when people started to figure this out in the print on demand world they started to make shirts that had to do with like celebrating being a nurse um, because you know a nurse is something that's a hard job and and these people that are nurses are out there saving lives basically on a daily basis and it's kind of a sometimes a, an under glorified job right because they're they're not the doctor so there's a lot of pride there and when people started making uh, specific designs and apparel to celebrate um, the, the, the pride of being a nurse, the niche took off and did extremely well and still does well. It's a huge niche, right? Because a lot of, a lot of people, uh, are nurses. Okay. Now let's talk about finding viral products. Now that we looked at some of the criteria and the concept and the value proposition behind what makes a winning product, talking about finding, uh, actual viral products and, and what makes a product go viral. Okay. In dropshipping, finding viral product is, is all about that wow factor. Okay, it's something that has to be engaging. Uh, I have I have videos to promote. It doesn't have to be a video, but videos are more shareable, right? You know, something about a viral product is it has to be like. When I say wow factor, okay, I'm probably not the first person you heard say that, um, but the idea behind the wow factor is that it has to have an element of. Uh, an element of triggering some kind of emotional response in people, okay? They have to be amazed by it or think it's so cool or think it's shareable because they haven't seen it before or it's something really new and unique or it's something that they know that solves a problem that somebody would just absolutely love to see or, you know, I just know my best friend could use this or this is so amazing, I've been looking for something like this for so long, right? It has to have that type of unique factor to it that makes it shareable on social media. When people start to comment and share things that's when it starts to go viral because they say that every person okay this this diagram here they say every person that shares something it, it reaches at least three more people right and so when people start to share that's when things start to compound and you start to get a more viral effect because everybody's sharing the content 
So here's an example of one. You can see this item had 56,000 shares, right? That's incredible. That's a, that's a lot of shares. Uh, and it's because it was such a cool, unique product. Now, if you haven't seen it, I apologize. This isn't a live video here. It's just a, a picture of what the item is, but I'll, I'll do my best to explain it really quickly. Basically, as you can see, it was a bowl uh, with these slots in the bottom of it. And it also came with a lid. And, and the lid was something that was able to be rotated around the top, okay? So the idea was you could stick your fruits or veggies right in the bowl and wash it right within the bowl. And then as soon as you're done washing, you put the lid on, flip it over onto the counter, and then you're able to just take a knife and chop very easily because it has guided slots. So all you're doing is chop, 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 chop right through the guided slots, and then you can rotate it 180 degrees, chop, 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 chop again, take the lid off and pour your salad dressing right in, and you have a, a fresh salad made, right? Uh, or if it's fruit, even easier. You don't need to pour anything in. So it was something that was really, really cool. Now you see uh, the copy here was very simple, right? Getting people excited. Oh my God, this bowl is amazing. Fresh and healthy salad can be done in just one minute. And then the video was a short, uh, like 50 second video demonstrating how the product works okay it went viral made a lot of money for a lot of different stores uh i sold some of these as well this was not my ad here but uh this was i think the ad i found that had the most engagement on it 11 million views 56,000 shares 33,000 comments 119,000 reactions that's that's a viral video okay uh and and it 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 makes sense because this was a unique product. It had the effect that when you looked at this, you were like, wow, that's really cool. It hit multiple value propositions, right? It saves time. It created efficiency. Uh, and it, it solved the problem, even though it wasn't really a real problem, right? Like it's not a real problem to be able to chop a salad and make it the traditional way where you pull out a cutting board, chop some stuff up and put it in a bowl and mix it all together. But it, when you see this video and you see how much more simple it was for these uh, fresh single serving salads to be made very quickly, it kind of created that problem in the mind of the person watching it. Like, this is so much better. I want this item, right? It creates that gap of awareness that, okay, now there's a problem that I'm seeing and I want this item because I think it's better. And it also definitely how that wow factor, right? Like you watch it and you look at it and you're like, wow, that's such a cool idea. Or why didn't I think of that? Or man, that's, that's, you know, that's so cool that I've never seen a bowl like that before. Right. So it, it hit all of those factors. And of course, that's why it went viral. It went viral to the point that many, many people were able to sell this and make money. Now let's talk about where to find great product ideas. Okay. And again, at this point, I'm just going through, uh, I'm just going through like the, the points, I guess, of where to find them. Cause I'm going to demonstrate this in the next video. All right. Uh, but AliExpress still a, a great place. Look, AliExpress is, here's the thing about AliExpress and what we talked about in quality drop shipping. AliExpress is not where you want to source your products from. Okay. And, and using Oberlo and Dropify is kind of a, uh, a, a dated model, right? Not that the software isn't good. The software is great, but actually sourcing products from AliExpress, which is exactly what those apps do is just not is not as good anymore because of the unreliability because of the long shipping times because of the lack of quality control so but the the fact is that aliexpress is still a fantastic place to find ideas right there's millions and millions of product ideas on aliexpress uh and the only other place i think better is amazon but uh, the one thing to think about with AliExpress is using the mobile app because the mobile app has different, uh, different functions on it that are not on desktop. On desktop is still great, right? Like you can go to the deals of the day. You can go to the trending items. You can just browse around. I'm going to show you some, some tips and tricks for looking on AliExpress. But on the mobile app, there's some cool stuff like the fan zone and buyer's picks where you can actually go in and see what items might be trending based on, uh, bloggers or based on stuff that's actually selling right now and you can find some good ideas that way amazon the thing with amazon is searching the best sellers movers and shakers i like to go there uh, but you can also go on amazon and just again like aliexpress you can use it as a place to start in a category and then start just browsing around right um there's really no look i'm, I'm going to put it to you like this 
in my opinion, I have seen most of the training out there. I've networked with most of the big sellers. Uh, I've, I've done drop shipping for a long time. I've networked and worked with thousands of people all around the world. And so I, I'm into direct line of the information that's out there. Okay. People that are trying to sell you a trick or a gimmick are generally just trying to sell you something, right? There, There's really no substitute for doing actual research when it comes to finding great product ideas. Sure, there are softwares, like you can see, like Ecom Hunt, Pexta, Commerce Inspector. These are great softwares to help you spy on trending items, and, and that can work well, right? But basically, uh, they're just shortcutting the process for you because there's still research that is going into that. They're still, they're, they're pulling data basically and, and looking for trending items on the platforms. But when it comes to finding great product ideas, AliExpress and Amazon and, and going there and manually searching is honestly still one of the best ways, right? Because that's how you can find something unique. That's how you can find ideas that other people are not selling yet and you can create the trend and you can be the one that is able to bring something to the market that makes a lot of money because there are literally you know thousands of products being added to both every single month right uh so Amazon searching the best sellers, movers and shakers is a place you can go because that's constantly updated. The movers and shakers list is updated every 24 hours or every hour or something like that where it's it's showing you the the highest jump in sales rank. Now, it doesn't always, you know, because there's big brands that are competing on on Amazon too, so not everything is relevant, but sometimes you can find some really good ideas there. Uh and Amazon is is a place honestly where some of the the best product ideas will come from okay uh and then also you can search other oh Taobao and 1688 i almost forgot to mention Taobao and 1688 are chinese sites like aliexpress uh except they are only for china right aliexpress is meant to connect china wholesalers with the rest of the world it's Taobao and 1688 are just meant to connect china sellers with chinese uh consumers all right um but they are still uh good places that you can go find research and uh for product ideas because they have a different way of showing their items and curating their items and you can find a lot of unique items on there that aren't even on aliexpress sometimes so uh again we'll, we'll look at some of this stuff in the next video but i'm just giving you some of the the places that you can look at and and my thoughts on how to use them uh, and other Shopify stores, of course, this is part of your market research section. Um, Commerce Inspector is a store spy. So what's cool about Commerce Inspector, it's an expensive expensive software to use. But if you know the stores you're looking for, even if you don't, like Commerce Inspector allows you to search by like keywords to find stores that are out there. And then you can look at those stores and see what their best selling products are. Okay. And, and so like on Google, you can do my Shopify and look for uh you can look for other stores that are in your category and then you could use Commerce Inspector to inspect that store and see what their best selling products are. So that's something that's a little bit more niche specific. If you know what you're looking for, you already know what niche you're in. The softwares like Ecom Hunt and Pexta, these are more for like general drop shipping stores that are just trying to sell anything under the sun, uh, which can work, but it's still, you know, it's like eh, that kind of stuff is, is getting a little bit played out. Uh, and then AliExpress and Amazon again are, are places where you can go find anything. So you can go in there looking niche specific, or you can go in there just browsing around to find ideas on new products or new niches or even new stores. Uh, because some, you know, some of these will have like this, you'll be able to go like on AliExpress and they'll have a store. Right, the seller, you'll see one item, you open up that seller's store and they'll have like a whole list of items that could be an entire category for your store or even make up an entire niche store in and of itself. So we'll look at some of that in, in the next video, okay? Uh, and then how to evaluate your product ideas. Um, sorry about that. Here are a few questions, all right? Now, when I ask these questions, I mean, these are like questions that I ask every single time, okay? because they help you identify just narrowing in on on the best product ideas right number one do i have a clear audience for this item basically looking at it do you know how you're going to target this do you know who the market is do you know who the ideal customer is okay and an example of this is jewelry all right a lot of people have tried to go in the jewelry and it can be a very tough 
tough niche to sell into because if you're not specific, it's very general. Of course, we know the queer audience for most jewelry is going to be, uh, well, depends. I mean, there's men's jewelry and women's jewelry, right? But let's just say we're talking about women's jewelry, like necklaces, earrings, bracelets. Of course, the queer audience is women, right? But that's a huge, massive, massive, massive audience. And if you're trying to do that, you're in competition now with much bigger brands that have much bigger marketing budgets and much more established brand loyalty. So identifying a queer audience for that is tough because it's like, okay, this is women ages 18 and up. I'm not saying you can't find a winning product that way, but I'm saying you're probably going to spend a lot of money trying to market that way. And you may go broke before you even find something that's a winner. But now on the, on the, the other side of that, right, we can take that concept and narrow it in. There was a winning product that did uh, really well. I think it was early last year uh, that were cat earrings, cat hoop earrings. Okay. And, and it's hard to describe this, uh, without seeing it. I, I, mean, I didn't pull up a picture of it, but basically it was a, it was a hoop earring. The front half of the hoop was the front half of the cat and the back half of the hoop hoop that was on the back of the ear was the, was the bottom half of a cat. Okay. And, and it was really uh, a unique item. Okay. They were cool and they had multiple variants. And so now you, you know, it's not just women, right? It's not just women 18 and plus. Now you're able to narrow in on an audience of women who also like cats, right? So it's, it gives you a much more clear audience and clear direction. Is this item niche or does it have mass appeal? No right or wrong answer, but you know, generally, uh, mass appeal items are the ones that are going to be able to scale much larger unless you're in like a really large niche, but something to consider. Is this a quality item? Okay. You definitely want to be looking at the reviews and feedback across AliExpress, Amazon, making sure that this is a quality item and that people actually are enjoying this item if they've purchased it. Okay. Do you have a reliable vendor, a uh, reliable vendor, supplier, whatever you want to call it. That is shipping, communication, and scaling. All right. You need to know that they are going to ship your item out and get it to where it needs to be in a quick enough period of time. You need to know that you have great communication with them so that they are with you every step of the way if you need something, because that's going to become really important when it gets to scaling. When you get the more orders, that's when operations become super important and communication becomes really important. All right. And that's why I am partnered with WIO to, to bring you what I feel like is, is one of the absolute best in this area. And they, they hit all of these boxes, shipping, communication, and scaling. Will this item be profitable for my business? All right. That might sound like an obvious one, but I've seen so many people that try to sell items that just aren't profitable, right? Like if you find an item and, and this has to deal with the perceived value of the item. Okay. If you find an item that you can source for $3, but the perceived value of the item is only $15. Like why even sell that? Right. With a marketing cost of say $10, which would be, uh, which would be good, right? A $10 marketing cost, you're going to be making $2 profit on this item. So unless you have a really good upsell in place, uh, which is possible, you know, it's like, why even sell that item? You're not going to grow and scale a business and become wealthy selling an item like that. Uh, can I market this item effectively? Um, basically you want to, I mean, this is just the idea of, is there enough material? Do you have enough video content out there to be able to create a video or are you going to order this item and make a video yourself are the videos high quality or i'm sorry are the photos high quality of the product uh, are you going to be able to market this product with the existing photos that you find from the supplier or are you going to have to order this product and take pictures yourself because it's just not enough quality and does this item fit within my store and overall brand a few tips. Uh, most people in e-commerce right now are playing a copycat game where everyone is trying to sell the same thing. Uh, and I don't want to say that it can't work, right? It can work if you're quick and have good timing, uh, but it's also becoming a lot more difficult. It's a race to the bottom, right? Software exposure is high. So a lot of people are looking at the same thing when you talk about some of these product softwares that are out there, like again, like Ecom Hunt, Pexta. Now I think that these are good softwares, right? I know the owner of Ecom Hunt. I think it's a, it's a great software, but you have to be careful in using this. You have to still find a way to distinguish yourself because it, it starts to become a race to the bottom with this because everybody's looking at the same products. Everybody's 
trying to copy each other and sell the same stuff using the same videos and the same photos uh, and the market can sense that okay many of the biggest sellers i know are only selling items uh that they find that are not yet being sold to a big audience okay like i mentioned in the beginning in the ecom empires coaching uh it's all about a research process to find items that has nothing to do with any of these product curation softwares like uh, the, the ones that I've mentioned. Another one that's out there I see all the time is the Product List Genie. Uh, there's another one, EH Product Finder. Uh, I think there's, there's, I'm sure there's more, right? There's new ones popping up all the time. They're basically, Ecom Hunt was the first one. And then since then, now basically all of them are just ripping the same kind of, uh, ripping the same kind of development to, to copy the same software and just change little things about this or that or change the branding. So they're all basically doing the same thing though. They're, they're pulling trending product ideas. Okay. You want to look for unique ideas that haven't hit saturation yet and focus on good marketing angles to sell them. That's my tip, right? If you want to play the copycat game, that's fine. Just understand that that game is not going to last, right? That's a race to the bottom, so get out of it as quickly as you can. If that's where you need to start to just understand how it works and, and get your, you know, as they say, get your feet wet in, in the e-commerce world with drop shipping, then do that. But you just understand that you want to move out of that as quickly as possible. And you want to create a system and consistency in your method um, for researching and launching products, okay? People at the highest level of drop shipping, and I can say this because I've met people at the highest level of drop shipping, and I've talked with them about their process, and I've masterminded with them about what they're doing. And they're not really doing anything magical, okay? They are just scanning much more product ideas. They have a much better process and a much better system like these people are in it and they have teams that are literally going through lots of product ideas every single week and then they're narrowing it down to the best ones that they see okay there's really no substitute for product research and testing if you are in this drop ship model okay now look i know that there are people that are going to be out there and say well that's that's a bad business model if all you're doing is testing products you know people are going to lose money doing that but I already said it's quality over quantity, right? I'm not telling you to go out and pull a hundred product ideas and just start throwing money at them to hope one of them works. I'm giving you the criteria and giving you the value proposition and talking about how to do the market research and the niche research so you can narrow in and focus on what you think are actual good quality product ideas. But no matter what, to start and, and to, to narrow in on a good quality product idea, you need to be researching lots of ideas, right? You need to be researching lots of trends and you need to be doing this or you need to have a team doing this consistently and be creating a system based on certain criteria of how you are narrowing in these product ideas that you're finding so that you are getting down to the quality ones that are worth your time to build out a good marketing campaign for, to get your creatives together, and then to go use the marketing methods we're going to talk about in the rest of the academy to start trying to make sales and then finally looking for mass appeal products okay this is a mass appeal product that went super viral last year uh, a lot of people sold i know somebody's still selling these actually under under an, an actual brand um, it's a great product though and why because it is a mass appeal product all right. This could apply to both men and women. It's a large age range. I mean, it could be students. It could be travelers. It could be uh, young people. It could be old people. It, it The language doesn't matter, right? No language is necessary to understand here. It could be anywhere in the world that people find this product. This is a worldwide product that you can sell. Uh, and as you see here, it has even multiple variants as well, right? So this is an, an example of a mass appeal product. And these are the the best kinds of dropship products that you can find because when you start to market them number one again there's a lot of room to scale based on that mass appeal but also number two there's even room for competition right because there's going to be competition and so this you know mass appeal products multiple people sold this and and made money all right so this was called the anti-theft backpack and another thing to note in there is the way that it was named okay the anti -theft backpack one of the reasons that it also did so well and went so viral is because it hit on some really good value propositions and the main one was anti-theft 
All right. It was advertised with a video. Uh, well, I'm, I'm sure it was advertised multiple ways, but the biggest advertising campaign that I saw for it was with a video of people, you know, walking around in their daily commute, traveling, using this backpack, and then other people trying to come up behind and like steal something out of it or get in it, you know, and it was, it has an anti-theft mechanism that makes it really, really difficult for somebody to be able to break into your backpack while you're wearing it or while you're out traveling out and about. Okay. And so that was like the unique marketing angle. That was the value proposition. Um, it, it made life easier, brought more comfort in being able to travel with your stuff. Uh, and, and it focused on an outcome and solved a problem for people to protect their stuff and also to to be able to charge their phone on the go right from their backpack. So it hit a lot of value proposition points. It had a mass appeal audience. It definitely was something that had never really been seen before and in this kind of way when people started marketing it on Facebook. And so it was a huge winning item. All right. So that's everything for uh, this lesson in, in looking at the Again, looking at the criteria, looking at the, the value propositions and the concept behind a winning product, what makes a winning product, why people buy products, and the types of things you can focus on in your research uh, to help you narrow in and identify winning product ideas. And in the next lesson, we will actually jump into some, uh, some live demonstration to further go into how you can you can watch me walk you through some ideas of looking for products on some of the, the resources that I mentioned. All right, see you in the next video.